Hey there guys, it's Lee here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your batch and config files for Ethereum mining. So recently I uploaded a video um, or a couple of videos about Ethereum mining and um, a lot of people found those really helpful, but some people are still kind of getting um, stuck and confused on a few different aspects of it. So what I thought I would do is uh, kind of run through a little bit more detailed um, a breakdown of the actual batch config files um, and exactly what you need to do so hopefully it answers um, some of the common questions and helps people that are stuck and helps them to get unstuck okay so if you have a look in the actual description I'll have like a link to a download which is just the uh, Ethereum miner by Genoil um, it'll be something once you actually download and open it it'll look something similar to this so this is the main kind of a working folder that you can be working with. So inside you'll find some batch files, um, some like um, DL, DLL files, and you'll find the, uh, the ETH miner itself. Um, also there is a help file, which um, some people are either not reading or or they're not um, understanding. Um, but that's, that's obviously, you know, uh, worth a read and it probably would answer some questions. But okay, so let's move on. So the first thing we want to do, these batch files, all they do is kind of, uh, instead of opening a command window and typing out the actual command manually, um, they just kind of run that as a an automated kind of progress. So batch files are useful, it just saves you doing lots of uh, repeat typing. So that's what a batch file uh, works as. Um, what we're going to do is first, with um, the ETH miner, a lot of people are having problems with um, identifying the correct uh, devices that they're actually going to be mining with. Um, by default, you'd normally just be mining on your graphics card. Um, but some people are getting confused and ended up mining on their processor. And other people are also getting confused and they ended up mining on their um, integrated graphics card. So if you've got like an Intel 4000 or some of the AMD um, APUs, um, for example, I've got one which is a A10-7700 and that has a built-in graphics component as well. So if you've got that kind of stuff, that can cause um, complications. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a really simple patch file that helps us to identify exactly what devices we've got installed on the computer that we want to be uh, mining on. So you can see I've got this uh, file up here, which is called devices.bat and I'll show you how to make your own in case you don't have that. So from the working folder, if you right click and then we want to create a new um, text document. Uh, just uh, don't give it a name for the time being and just open it. Might be slightly different depending on what version of uh, Windows that you've got, um, but I'll show you in a moment. So inside what we want to do is we want to have this command so you can I'm just gonna copy and paste it but you need to type it out so it is ETH minor space and then you've got hyphen G and then space and then dash dash list hyphen devices yeah uh, also underneath add this part as well so then we do enter and we've got pause underneath so you just need to manually type that out once you've done that just close this other window just to keep it kind of focused. So if minor dash G dash dash list dash devices and then pause underneath it. So once we've done that, we want to go to file and we want to go to save as. And it's going to ask where we want to save it. So in the actual file name part, it's just sent that. So in the file name part, we want to type devices. I'm just going to do one uh, because I've already got an existing um, file so devices one dot bat and then underneath make sure you select this it says save as file type you want to change it from text documents and you want to change it to all files uh, if you don't do this it will just save it as a text document and it won't run as a batch file so devices one dot bat file type all files then click save and um, you can close the other the actual notepad now you can see the actual um, the icon has kind of changed as well so this is the actual document that we opened. We can just close that. And now you see we actually have like two device files, but here's one that we actually made. So we've got devices1.bat. Uh, if we just, uh, I can show you, show you now. So you can, if you go to right click and open, it will open um, the actual program. Sorry, that wasn't what I was meant to show you. I was meant to go to 
if you go to edit, it opens like in notepad. So that's the program. It's kind of a little bit like you're making your own like mini program. Uh, so click on close. So now if we actually um, open it, so we'll just double click on it. And then we'll just send to that. So what it's doing is telling the ETH miner to run a specific command, which is the dash G, which is for OpenCL, and then dash dash uh, the list of devices. So it's going to tell us um, what devices that we've actually got in this particular machine. Now this machine is um, pretty simple. Um, so down here you've got listing OpenCL devices, and then it says format device. So you can see I've got a GeForce GTX 970, and it tells us what the device type is how much memory, the max allocation, and work group size. The bottom parts don't really matter. But the main, um, or the main sort of thing that you want from this is this uh, device ID. So you can see that device ID in brackets is zero. You might have multiple devices. So for example, your uh, CPU might be zero, and then your graphics card might be one or two, depending on what devices that you got. But the actual device that you want to be working with, um, just check what the actual number is. So the device ID is zero, that's the one what we want to be using. Um, I think I covered that. Um, yeah, and at the end it's just got pause, so just it keeps that window open, otherwise it will just close um, immediately afterwards. So that's just what the pause command uh, does. So the device is zero. Um, I'll just show you as well. Um, I believe the same process, I've not actually tried it. Um, where am I going? Just need to edit. I think if we do dash u, I think it shows us the CUDA devices as well. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll just try it. So let's just see what happens if it lists the CUDA devices or not. I'm not too sure. Uh, the hard drive's just uh, spinning up or something there. Uh, Okay, so that didn't work. I just thought I'd just uh, try that. We'll just uh, cut that out. I might leave it in. Sometimes it's good just to uh, test these things. Okay, so now that we know what our device um, ID is, and our device ID is um, zero, but by default, the Ethereum uh, miner will mine on device zero. So for my uh, particular configuration, I don't really need to add anything to it, but you might need to do yours and I'll explain that as we move on. So now we know what our devices are. So let's move on. So you can see down here, um, although I've got a um, NVIDIA graphics card, it mines or works better if I use OpenCL. So even though it's an NVIDIA uh, card, um, it still supports OpenCL functions. So you can mine on either CUDA or OpenCL. Uh, generally, if you've got a um, NVIDIA device, you would use the CUDA setup. Um, if you've got an AMD device or also some NVIDIA devices, then you wanna use OpenCL. So um, it, yeah, and if you just got an AMD device, uh, then just use um, OpenCL. And so that's a little bit long-winded, but that's, that's just um, how it is, just trying to explain it for you. So if we go to my um, default batch file, and I'll explain down the different components for you. So I'm just gonna go uh, click on it, and then I'm gonna go to edit. Okay, so this is what your kind of, your, your basic kind of batch file might look like. So at the very first part, we've got ETH miner. So that was the same as the batch file that we had in the uh, device batch file. The second part is dash G. That means we're selecting a open GL device. So you'll be using this dash G if you've got like a um, an AMD card or also some classes of NVIDIA cards as I already mentioned. So that indicates to the ETH miner that we want to be using the, or running the ETH miner as an open CL um, application. Uh, yeah, sorry, just to continue on. So the next part of it is this dash F, and that tells the ETH miner that we want to be doing pool mining. And the next part is the actual pool address. So for each Ethereum pool, the, um, the configuration is done slightly differently. So what you generally have, so you're going to have the dash F, and then you're going to have like a website address, 
and it's going to run something like that. The next part is depend on, on each uh, pool. Each one will have like a different configuration. So if we're uh, with Ethereum pool, dot co, so then it goes minor, then it goes equals. This first part, which is 18 at, that tells the pool that I'm mine at um, 18 mega hashes. Um, I don't really know why they have that. I think it was originally to set the, um, the difficulty up correctly for you, um, but they do actually measure it anyway. So they, so with Ethereum pool, you have to add this first part, which is 18 at. Then this next part, which is 0x and then 51. This part is my actual Ethereum address. So that's that part there. Um, if you're wondering where you get your Ethereum address from, um, probably the simplest way to do it would be to go to, I don't really recommend uh, mining directly to an exchange, but if you go to an exchange like a crypto exchange like um, uh, Btrex or Polonix, um, and then you can create like a deposit address for Ethereum and it will look something like this. Then what you can do is you can pull mine and the deposits from your pool mining will be sent directly to your exchange address, not your local wallet because I'm presuming you don't have one. Um, I will talk more in a different video about setting up the actual local wallet and stuff like that uh, in the future. So the next part is then we've got this at sign and then we've got worker 10. So that's kind of like a nickname for the, the miner that you're using. It can be anything you want. So that is kind of how the configuration is done for the Ethereum pool. And underneath it again, we've just got pools, which means so if, if the program uh, bugs out or hits an error or anything like that, um, it will just pause on the last thing it was doing rather than just closing and you won't understand uh, what happened. Okay, so I'll just show you now how the um, dwarf pool looks in comparison. So we'll just uh, compare, sorry, just to close that other folder, I need to keep that open, we'll come back to that. So at the top, we've got the Ethereum pool, which is the one that I just showed you. And then underneath it, we've got our configuration for um, dwarf pool. So just uh, show you. So on the bottom, it's the same. So it's the minor dash G, which is the open seal dash F. We've also got like an extra white space in there that shouldn't really be in there, but it doesn't matter. So this, uh, so you can see the dwarf pool is a little bit different. So if we compare the two, but it's just almost the same. So the first part is just the actual pool's website address. So it's the, uh, the domain name and this is the pool 80. So then the next part is, you'll notice that the end kind of configuration is a little bit different. So it's just the website address, forward slash, and then it's just our uh, Ethereum wallet address, which is the same as it was up there. And then slash, and then we've got a uh, worker nickname again. So you can see with the uh, dwarf pool, they don't ask for this first part, which is your expected or um, hash rate. So it's slightly different. So each pool will have its own um, kind of requirements. And if you just go to the actual pool that you want to mine with, whether it's Ethereum pool, Dwarf pool, Nano pool, or whoever you use, they will tell you the, the, the correct configuration. But generally speaking, it will be something like this. It will look kind of similar. So that's kind of um, how to set up the, con the config or the batch file for each of the pools. Uh, I'll just make sure they save, close those. Uh, close those and then we'll go back to the actual uh, folder we was working with. So the the other part of it was um, actually let's go back so if I show you this um, I'll go back to our original config file so let's say for example um, your OpenCL device is not zero um, so maybe your OpenCL device is a secondary. So you might have like an integrated graphics card as well as a um, a proper or a, a good graphics card, like a you know like a plug-in graphics card. So in that case, your um, so your de your device ID might be one. So by default, ETH miner will choose device zero. So if you've got device zero, then you don't need to add any extras. But if you've got like, the device one, for example. 
um, you need to add in a special uh, little part. So I'll just show you that. So if we go to the actual help file itself, which is just like a readme file, uh, and it's got lots of different information in there, but you can see under mining configuration, you've got this, which is dash dash open dash device. So let's just uh, copy that. So I'm just gonna copy that. So if you've got like your main GPU is on device one, for example, then you would do eth minor dash G, and then you added this extra part. Then you wanna do a space and then do number one. So just make sure there's a space between things. Um, and then you would want to say that. So what it tells is the eth minor, you wanna use the open cell device one rather than default, which is zero. And then you just save that and then you would run it. So that's how it works when you select. Uh, the same would also apply, you know, if you've if you've got multiple graphics cards, and you could do two or or, or whatever number you uh, needed. So that's how you set up the um, the open CL devices if it's different for for your uh, you know particular configuration. So I'm just going to save that as it as it was. Um, using um, CUDA. So if you've got like an Nvidia card. Um, you can use the CUDA configuration. Um, I've not really had great results with it, but you might find it works better for you or maybe not. So uh, as with the open seal device, I'm just gonna edit it, which is a batch file. And you can see it looks a little bit different. So I'm just gonna add the pause onto the end. Um, always do that, that's kind of um, really useful. Uh, Especially if you're, you know, if you're trying to click on the actual uh, batch file and a window's just closing immediately, that will just uh, stop it. So that's kind of useful. But it's pretty much the same setup as before. So we've got the ETH miner, but in this time we've got a different switch. So we've got dash U. So it tells the ETH miner that we want to use the CUDA uh, kind of programming um, for mining. Then we've got Ethereum pool, and then we've got kind of that extra config there. So it. In the, with the uh, CUDA miner, I was only mining at seven mega hashes. So I've just put seven at and then my Ethereum address and then your nickname on the end. So that's how you do CUDA mining. Um, what I'd probably recommend is that if you've got a NVIDIA card, probably just try both. So um, try it with um, CUDA as it is there, or just change it to OpenCL and then save it and try and see what happens. You might find that you get better results with um, the OpenCL version rather than the CUDA version, but um, it's all really to do with testing, so just try uh, different things. So I'm just going to save that and um, close it. So um, I think that kind of covers pretty much everything that you might need to know. I think that certainly covers the most uh, common sort of uh, questions and answers. So yeah, if you have any questions or comments, then just put them in the comments box below and I'll try to um, answer them as best I can if they haven't been answered already. Um, yeah, and hopefully you found this uh, video to be useful. So till the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.